My name is Mark Hodges. On this particular day, I, I had a number of surgeries before that. So I was in my fifth surgery. Um, they had to, I had complications with uh, this mesh they put in your abdomen because I had this thing called an umbilical hernia. So they were, they had to open, it was an invasive surgery where they had to open me up. And, and so when, so when, when I, something, either my heart stopped or something happened where I was no longer connected to this body. So, um, uh, I sort of floated above myself in the operating room and I was looking down at myself and um, I I really uh, I tried to tell them you know don't save me because I didn't you know I didn't want to come back because I had I had been through so much I um, I had been through four operations up to this point I was also diagnosed with Lyme disease so I, I was in a lot of pain every day, constant pain. And um, it's not a very fun, it's not very fun living with that much pain. So um, so after a while, after telling them, they couldn't hear me, of course, but you can see everybody around you just like you can when you're in the body, but they can't see you. You're like a ghost, right? <laughs> and so... Um, several things happen right away. Number one, I knew things, just all these, you just start knowing or remembering everything because our brains, you, I realized first, first off the bat, that your brains trap you into forgetting who you really are, where you came from before you were born here, you know? Um, and I realized all these, all these information just, I just automatically knew, including the sun. I, I realized our sun was very important to us. That's one of the first things I remember knowing when I came out of my body was the connection we have with our sun and the stars. Think of our sun like a, a giant energy station <laughs> or a relay station that relays energy to us and that's what our souls use to operate these bodies because we're all electric our bodies are made for, to run on electricity and our soul is the energy that runs our bodies so that's one thing i knew when i came out of my body and then uh, eventually um i don't know how much time went by and i don't know it could be Time doesn't really happen the same when you're out of body. Time goes by different here. Um, so the next thing that happened is I started I started getting pulled backwards. Like I was looking down at my body on the operating table, and the next thing I know, I'm being pulled backwards by a force, like a a magnetic force of some kind, you know, like a tractor beam. Do you, do you know what a tractor beam is? <laughs> like a, in a movie, like maybe Star Wars or something, something that locks onto something and pulls it back or pulls it towards some somewhere. There, there was a force that pulled me backwards. And uh, I just sort of, I, it wasn't a scary force or I wasn't afraid of it or anything. And, um, I, I actually got pulled into an electrical outlet in the operating room. I, I actually got sucked into the electrical system of the hospital. And at that point, I just shot. Everything went like I went faster than light. I could tell because light was going like this behind me. I was actually traveling faster than light. And I was going through this wormhole. It looks like kind of like a wormhole. You would call a wormhole, like in the movies, like maybe in Contact, where she was going through that wormhole when the ball was dropped through that thing. That's kind of how it looked to me. And so I, I, I saw all these colors, colors we don't even have here. And I was asked, I was telling myself, "Whoa, this is so cool." And um, 
after a while, this wormhole just stopped. And when it, when it stopped, um, I was somewhere else. Uh, I could I could I could see in the corner of my eye, sort of in my mind, I could see myself on the operating table in Tampa, Florida. Okay, but now after going through this wormhole, I was now in a different place. I was in um, San Diego, California, but not this San Diego, California. <laughs> it was a different dimension, if you will. So, and um, I knew that somehow. I don't know how I knew that, but I did. And when um, I was in a bathroom in this dimension, and I was looking in a mirror. And so remember, I, I just came through this big wormhole and then everything just stopped and I was in a bathroom and I was looking in a mirror and I saw a face in the mirror, but it wasn't my face. It was somebody else's face, I thought. But um, so at first I thought like I was sort of like a fly on the wall, being able to see someone else's life. Um, cause I knew, I knew I had left my body. I knew I was dead, but, I um, uh, so I thought, okay, this, now that I'm dead, this is, I'm just going to, I'm taking some kind of tour somewhere. And, um, eventually though, I realized that I was controlling the body that was in the mirror, <laughs> Isn't that pretty amazing? Um, and I was like, how is this happening? So I was looking at my hands. I was looking at my face. I was touching my face. And in that place, I was 16 years old. And I was a boy, basically, a teenager. In my life, this life here, I was, uh, I was about 41, 42 years old in this body. But in that body, I was only 16. And I was also like six years in the future to this life in this dimension. Um, can you imagine? So this is the first life I was able to experience um, for some reason. I don't know why this was the first one I experienced, but I learned pretty quickly like um, in experiencing this life, uh, I learned that things that happened here and uh, things that happened here and this illusion I call it the one I'm talking to you in they are connected these lives are connected somehow like um, later on I learned like when you think about something here um, it's, it happens everything you think gets created can you imagine that? You may not see it here, but it gets created somewhere else. So I was able to experience this life uh, for about two years, two, two years of our time um, until my 18th birthday. And um, the reason I was able to experience this life was to get me to understand that the decisions that not only I make here uh, affect everybody. We're all, we're all we're, when you hear that expression, we're all one, we really are all one. We're just living individual individual experiences. Each of us are living separate experiences, but there's one entity that I call, I now call the infinite one. All of us make up the infinite one. And the infinite one, is experiencing all these things all through us, and they all come back to the one experiencer, if you can imagine it. But the reason I came back, I, I, I really believe, was to teach people at, uh, all about who we are and, and remember how powerful we are and to get rid of fear in their life. Fear is a bad thing. It's, fear stops us from 
accelerating our societies. Our soul, the spirit, um, I think of it like uh, that thing on Iron Man, you know, that, that thing he puts on his chest. That's what, what our soul is. Our soul is the energy that runs our body. Once our body dies, that energy is no longer needed and it releases. So that soul is the same soul when you're one month old and you're 54 years old like me. There's no difference between your soul, no matter what age you are, okay? And that's important to understand because a lot of people don't understand why, for for example, why God allows a baby to die, an innocent child. Why are innocent children allowed to die? What you know, but you must understand there's a bigger picture, okay? There's a reason for all these things that happen, uh, good or bad. We we came here to experience things, hard lessons that you don't experience anywhere else. One way you can start doing or start healing yourself is a lot of our a lot of our problems we have is connected to the traumas in our lives. Not this is not just this life, but other lives we're living also. Now, some people might consider them past lives or future lives, but really they're all happening right now. You have to train yourself how to meditate. Okay. Now there's a meditation where you don't go where your body doesn't go to sleep, but the way I teach people to astral project, for example, you actually hypnotize yourself. And the way you do that is you keep your mind awake while your body goes to sleep. And there, um, I have videos on my YouTube channel that show you, show you how to do that. Um, so people, if they want to understand more about that, they can come to my channel to learn that. But basically, you, uh, you, you put your body to sleep, keep your mind awake. And when you do that, you will learn a lot about everything. You you can travel other anywhere in the in the galaxy, anywhere in this galaxy or the universe. You can go visit your mom or your father or your brother and sister's house, or you can go travel on some other part of the world if you wanted to. But also, you can the, you can learn wisdom while you're in that state uh, i've talked to a lot of different kind of beings um that look different than us but they're way smarter than us and they, they can teach you things so once you go back and you realize these other lives that you're living in and find out the patterns in this life compared to those patterns in those lives then you can start to learn how then once you understand why you are why you're here you can forgive remember your mind is powerful what you think happens but what happens is okay so in the morning when you wake up write it down three times after you eat lunch you write it down six times and this time you want to say how grateful you are for whatever this is you want that it's already happening or already happened you have to believe that whatever you want is already there it's already happened okay which is hard to okay and then at night time you write it down nine times and maybe this time you say i am so grateful that this happened to me or this is coming to me or this but never say Never think, why hasn't this happened? You know what I mean? Because it's easy to fall into that negative trap where you're preventing something from happening. So in addition to just writing it down, that's one piece of the puzzle. The other piece, okay, let's say that you wanted, let's say that you wanted to be an airline pilot, okay? That's your, that's what you want to manifest. You want to become an airline pilot. Well, part of that is you have to start living like an airline pilot. You understand? Find out where air, air, 
airplane air, uh, find out where pilots live where they what do they do what where do they go where do they uh, hang out at and start hanging out where they hang out and so you're putting yourself into a better position by becoming a pilot by doing what they do living like they live what do they study find out what they study and study what they're studying you know whenever you want to do something you you have to learn what other people that do that do and if nobody does it then you have to create your own path you know you have to imagine yourself doing that thing living that way and you have to be patient too because you have to wait till your vibration matches what you want and once that matches the universe it will come to you automatically and I don't know the science behind that. <laughs> I just know that there is something to it. Um, and uh, I used to say uh, a couple of years ago, I, I just, I was reminded about manifesting. And so I started saying, when I woke up in the morning, I said, great things are coming my way. I'm so grateful. Great things are coming my way. And the first day I said that, I had a check in the mail for $2,000 that I wasn't expecting. <laughs> so, um, it, I, had a, I, feel that? I, I, I had an aunt that died, and she gave all of us kids $2,000. And I, I didn't know that was coming. Totally a mystery. But it just happened. Or was it a coincidence? Who knows? But the, the day I said great things are coming my way i got that check in the mail for two thousand dollars so um the other thing is don't dwell on it just whatever you want to manifest just say i'm so grateful for it and start living that manifestation as if you were already there imagine yourself let's say if you wanted a certain kind of house or a certain kind of thing Imagine yourself doing living in that house. What would you do in the house? How how would you decorate the house? You know, you have to imagine. You have to change your vibration, in your in your in your mind, in your soul, and project that out. And once you project that, that will come back to you. You know, if you think, "Oh, I'll never be rich. I'll never." have this kind of car if you think that you won't <laughs> you have to know that it's already happened that's the that's the key and it was so nice meeting you uh, vivian and uh, again i was honored to be on your show tonight